Christ was so great, they stole him from us. Bring it out. They painted him to look like them. Bring right. That's how great our Messiah is. That they made him look like them. Right. Right. Huh? Understand that. And in the distance, if you ain't get it, it was never meant it. The spirit probably never bear with us. If it did, you would roll with us. We the chosen, we the go get us. This one here for the heathens. We the new, y'all the old school. King David with the dance moves. Black Messiah with the water shoes. Backstroking on him. Watch out, he got the water moves. Backstroking on him. Save the stone, we can never lose. We are Israel United in Christ. My name is Officer Jacob. To my left, my reader, soldier, advisor. We are out here to teach you so-called blacks, Hispanics, and Native American Indians, and also the children of the diaspora who were spread throughout North, Central, South America, throughout Africa, throughout Europe, throughout the Middle East. If you are a descendant of the slave trade, you are an Israelite according to the Bible. That's right. And with you being an Israelite, you must keep the commandments of the Most High God. Give me John 8, 32. It's high time we come out here to teach the truth. For far too long, our people have been lost in ideologies. We've been lost in Christianity. We've been lost in Islam. We've been lost in Seven Day Adventists, Mormonism. We've been lost in pushing the block. But it's high time that we come out to the truth. Read what you got. The book of John, chapter 8, verse 32. Yeah. And ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. God said, ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. So what is the truth that the so-called black man and black woman, the sons of the slave trade, are missing? The truth that the black man and black woman is missing is that what? You are an Israelite according to the Bible. That's right. And God's law still stands to this day. Give me Baruch 4 and 1. The reason why we at the bottom of society is because we don't keep the commandments of God. And we don't teach our young children to keep the commandments of God. We teach little, little, little Ray Ray on, on, on the block to what? To go push, push the block. Teach him how to get as many girls as he can get, how to get as many followers, how to be the best football player, the best basketball player. We don't teach him how to be a father. We don't teach him how to be a good brother, how to, how to be a good husband. We don't teach him how to be a leader in this community. Right. We just teach him to coon and buffoon for the so-called white man. Right. Read what you got. The book of Baruch, chapter 4, verse 1. This is the book of the commandments of God and the law that endureth forever. God said the laws endure forever. So the reason why we out here in today's society at the bottom is because we keep no laws. We rather keep the so-called white man laws in America, but we don't want to uphold the, 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 the laws of the true God. That's right. Come forth, brother. Come forth. Come forth. What's your name, bro? Say it again. Novell. Novell? Novell. Novell. Jacob, nice to meet you, brother. Look at the sign. See where you see yourself on the sign. On the left, these are the names that God called us. Judah. Okay, you are Judah, right? So you call yourself a so-called black man, right? Now, give me Hebrews 7.14. Let me show you something. You say you from the tribe of Judah, right? I want to let you all know, all you so-called black and Hispanics out here today, I want to let you know that you are an Israelite. You said you're from the tribe of Judah. Guess who else was from the tribe of Judah? Jesus the Christ, the black Messiah. The greatest man to ever walk foot on this earth was from a black man from the tribe of Judah. We're going to prove it. Read what you got. The book of Hebrews chapter 7 verse 14. For it is evident that our Lord sprang out of Judah. God said it's evident that our Lord, Jesus Christ, sprang out of Judah. Give me Revelations 1. So now, let's do some compare and contrast. You learned that in school, right? How old are you? 17. 17. Okay, so you, you're a smart brother, right? Now, we're going to take this image right here on the right, and we're going to take this image right here, and we're going to compare them like we did in second grade. Right. Read what you got. The book of Revelations, chapter 1, verse 14. His head and his hairs were white like wool. So the Bible says he had white hair, but it was woolly in texture. Who on the earth got woolly hair? Black people. Black people. Say it to the mic. Let everybody know. Black people. Black people got woolly hair. So now, let's look. White and woolly, not white and woolly. Strike one. You ever play baseball? How many strikes you get? Let's see. Read. As white as snow. And his hair was white as snow. Strike two. Is his hair white? Read. And his eyes were as a flame of fire. The Bible says that Christ's eyes was as a flame of fire. Why? Because he drank wine. Read. 
and his feet like unto fine bread. Your feet are the same color as your face and your arms, yes or no? Okay. So read it again. The book of Revelation chapter one. And his feet like unto fine brass. What color is brass? Brown. Exactly. Brass is brown. So now, let's see how dark brown it was, read. As if they burned in a furnace. Whenever you burn something in a furnace, what color does it become? You say what? Okay, but you ever cook toast? You you overcook it too long, it turn what? Blood. Say it again? Blood. So Jesus is what? Blood. Exactly. So now, that's three strikes against him. He's out of here. This is foolishness. That's right. This right. is the true King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Right. And guess what? It's important that you brothers and sisters know that you look like Christ because what? How great is Christ? The greatest of, of them all. The greatest of them all, right? So if you look like him, that means you're what? That you're great, right? Like him. But if God is a white man and you don't look like God, then what are you? You're trash. You're nothing, right? How long has this so-called black man and black woman been thinking that we've been trash? Since 1619 in slavery. But guess what? It's a new Negro today. These Negroes, we read the Bible. And we understand that we are the greatest people on the earth. And we've fallen from our greatness because we broke the commandments of God. Give me Deuteronomy 10 verse 12. The brother said he knows he's an Israelite from the tribe of Judah. What's your name, brother? Nicholas. Brother Nicholas, we out here teaching the brother that we are the Israelites. If you were a so-called black man, you come from the tribe of Judah. Watch what God said about the Israelites. Read that. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 10, verse 12. Uh -huh. And now, Israel. And now, Israel. Now, my brother, that you learned you were Israelite. Brother Nicholas, you were Israelite. Read. What do the Lord thy God require thee? God said that he required a certain thing of us. He didn't just put us on this earth to live willy-nilly however we felt like. Read what you got. But to fear the Lord. Uh -huh. Thy God, to walk in all his ways, and to love him, and to serve the Lord thy God with all thy heart, and with all thy soul, to keep the commandments of the Lord, and his statutes, which I command thee this day, for thy good. So what did God say he required of us to do? To do thy good. To do good, and what else? Exact. Say it again for the, for everybody out here. To do thy good and keep his commandments. That's what the so-called uh, black man right. has to do. Right. The solution to the problems in the black community is keeping God's commandments. That's right. So now, what commandments must we keep? Give me numbers 15. Give me numbers 15. Pray because you know. God said that the solution to the problems in our community is by keeping his commandments and his laws. That's right. But guess what? You can't keep no commandments and laws if you don't know what they are. Right. So we as the black man out here today in Purple and Gold are going to teach you God's laws. So that you can repent and be a better state than what you are in now. Right. Read what you got. The book of Numbers, chapter 15, verse 38. Now I want you to stop. Brother Nicholas, say, say your name again. Novell. 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 I want you to stop and look at everybody out here in purple and look at our shirts and see what you think is what you see in common. What do we all have on our shirts? At the bottom. Gold, gold, gold tassels. Gold You say tassels, right? Now, now, do you think we're just doing it for a fashion statement? Uh, Why do you think we're doing it? Uh, because it's in the book. It's in the book. So we're going to read it. Read what you got. The book of Numbers, chapter 15, verse 38. Watch what God says. Speak unto the children of Israel. God says, speak to Israel. Read. And bid them that they make them fringes in the borders of their garments. So we have fringes on our garments because God said for the children of Israel to wear fringes. But let's see why. Read. Throughout their generations, Read. that they put upon the fringe of the borders a ribbon of blue. And you notice we all got a ribbon of blue on our fringes. Go ahead. And it shall be unto you for a fringe. Read. That you may look upon so it. The purpose of the fringe is when I'm going through my day to day business at the Amo Center, at the Huntington Bank, I look at my fringes, read. And remember all the commandments of the Lord. Remember, we just talked about keeping God's commandments, right? So the fringes is made for you to remember God's commandments and what? Do them. And do them. Why? Because if I see you walking down the street, I'm not going to try to rob you because you're my brother. I see my fringes. I can't do that to you. If I see Big Booty Judy walking down the street, I'm not going to go holler at her and try to lust after her. Why? Because God said have one wife. Right. You a married man, you deal with your wife. You, that's not your wife, you don't deal with her. It's, it's just out. that simple. So these are, the, these are the solutions to the problem. Guess what? We as black people, we lead the entire world in what? Single parent homes. Why? Because we don't keep God's laws. Hebrews 13. We don't keep the law of marriage. We commit adultery against one another. We murder one another. Why? Because we lost the laws of God. Right. Watch what God said Hebrews 13. Read that. The book of Hebrews chapter 13 verse 4. Marriage is honorable in all. God said marriage is honorable in all. But when we grow up, what do we hear about marriage? We hear, oh, you're going to argue and fight like a married couple. That don't even make no damn sense. 
How you gonna sign up to be a companion with somebody for the rest of your life and all you do is fight all the time? That's not right. They, 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 they plant in the negative image of marriage in your head as a child. So when you become a man, you don't wanna marry nobody. The reason why they did that is because guess what? God knows that with a strong nation comes a strong family. So we are a broke, exactly. We are a broken people until we build our families back. Read it again. The book of Hebrews chapter 13 verse four. Marriage is honorable in all. I said marriage is honorable, read. And the bed undefiled. Whatever you do with your wife, that's your business, read. But whoremongers and adulterers, God will judge. But those brothers who want to jump from sister to sister to sister to sister, those sisters who want to jump from rod to rod to rod to rod, God said, I'm going to judge you. How do we get judged for fornication? How do we get judged? I'm not sure. Deuteronomy 2861. You ever heard of an STD? Okay, you don't think that's judgment from God? That's a judgment from God. Why? Because God established it for you to do what? Be with one woman. And for a woman to be with one man. Right? But we go out here and play the hearted with everybody. So God said, oh, you think you slick. I got something for you. Read what you got. The book of Deuteronomy chapter 28 verse 61. Also, every sickness. Every what? Sickness uh -huh. and every plague. A plague is a disease, brother. God said every sickness and every disease. Read. Which is not written in the book of this law. Which is not written in the Bible. Come on. Then will the Lord bring upon thee until thou be destroyed. God said he will bring the sicknesses upon us until we be destroyed. Now, can you can you read the word gonorrhea in the Bible? Can you read the word syphilis in the Bible? Can you read the word AIDS in the Bible? But God said every sickness that's not written in this Bible, I'm going to bring it upon you. Who leads the world in AIDS? Black men. God said it's a punishment for your iniquity. So if we was to repent and come back and keep his commandments, then he would deal with us. Give me Acts 319. Give me Acts 319. All of you so-called blacks, Hispanics, Native Americans, you are God's chosen people. And you got to repent and keep the commandments. Everybody under the sound of my voice, you got to understand, guess what? We are the greatest people on the face of the earth. But how has our greatness fallen so far? A king needs a what? A crown on his head, right? A crown that signifies he's the king, right? Guess what our crown is? God's laws. You can't be a king on this earth until you put your crown back on. So you got to come back to your crown, brother, and live with it and walk with it. You understand what I'm saying to you? Read that. The book of Acts, chapter 3, verse 19. Read. Repent ye therefore. Now I said repent. Come on. And be converted. And be converted. You ever seen a convertible car? What does it do? Drop it drop back, right? You got to drop back from your sins, brother. You got to leave your sins away. You got to come back to the Lord God. Read. That your sins may be blotted out. God said your sins will be blotted out if you repent and be converted. Give me Sirach 17, 25. Bring it out. God said if you repent and be converted and come back to him, your sins will be blotted out. You understand what I'm saying? So all the wickedness that you did, right? You come to the Lord with a humble, sincere spirit. You say, Father, I was in iniquity. I was in wickedness. I apologize. I'm in sin. I, I repent. Forgive me, Lord. I'm going to keep your laws. And the Lord going to build you up. Read what you got. The book of Sirach, chapter 17, verse 25. That's what I said. Return unto the Lord. So it's your job to return to him. Read. And forsake thy sin. And forsake his sins. Come on. Make thy prayer before his face. Pray to the Lord. And offend less. What? Offend less. No, pray to God and then keep on doing the same thing you was doing. Offend less. No, Lord, I, this is my last cigarette. And then you, 20 minutes later, you're smoking another. Offend less. God said offend less. That's a, a nice agreement if you ask me. Jeez. All you got to do is come, Lord, I'm sorry, and offend less. You get better and better as you, the longer and longer you walk. You're not going to be perfect in one day. You might make a mistake in here, but guess what? You offend less. Why? Because you love the Lord God. Right. You love God? Right. You say you love God. Okay, give me first. Give me love. Give me love. Because a lot of us say we love God. A lot of us go to church every Sunday, on Wednesday Bible study, Friday prior uh, rehears uh, choir rehearsal. Right? But we say we love God, but do we really love God in our actions? To love somebody is an action word, right? So if I tell you, bro, I love you, you my brother, right? I love you, bro. But if I rob you, do I really love you? Why? Because I'm not putting forth the action to show you I love you, right? right. Same thing with God. You think you're going to sweet talk the Lord, the creator of language? You're going to sweet talk him? Read what you got. The book of 1 John, chapter 5, verse 3. For this is the love of God. It said this is God's love, read. That we keep his commandments. That we keep his commandments. Come on. And his commandments are not grievous. And his commandments are not grievous. So if you love God, you keep his commandments, you walk in him, it's not a hard thing for you to do. Give me Deuteronomy 22. It's not hard for you to stop smoking. It's not hard for you to stop fornicating. It's not hard for you to stop stealing and robbing from your brother. It's yeah. not hard for you to, have, to stop having hatred because you love the Lord. That's what God said. He said the commandments is not grievous. 
But guess what? A lot of Israelites, when they hear the commandments of God, they get mad. They say, nah, that's not a way where we don't want to do that. We can't, we can't keep the laws. You ever been to jail? You, ever, you have been? I've been uh, JDS. JDS? Okay, now you clean now, right? You, you're trying to live the best way you can, right? You're not breaking no laws in America, right? Don't you know there's over 1,500 laws in America? There's only 600 in the Bible. So you got Negroes out here every day who keep all 1,500 of the white man's laws, but you can't keep the 600 laws ordained by God? Read it out. Read what you got. See? The book of Deuteronomy chapter 22, verse 5. Watch this. The woman shall not wear that which pertaineth unto a man. God said the woman should not put on man's clothes or things that pertain to men. What do women wear in today's society that pertain to men? Draws with us. Say it again. Jeans. Jeans. Thank you, brother. It said, the woman wears jeans. It pertains to men. Read. Neither shall a man put on a woman's garment. Neither shall a man put on a woman's garment. What's a woman's garment that men wear? Dresses. Dresses. Exactly. Right. Exactly. So, God said a man should not put on what a woman's supposed to wear, and a woman should not put on what a man is supposed to wear. Now, this is another commandment. I brought this out because this is a commandment of God. Right? But guess what? Our sisters, when they hear this, oh, no, no, no. I don't want to hear that. But the reason why God said don't wear it is because what? For all that do so are an abomination unto the Lord thy God. God said when you were a sister wearing pants, you're an abomination. And when you were a brother in a dress, you're an abomination. That's a, that's a disgusting, unclean thing. Right? Why? Because when you as a brother put on a dress, that puts on feminine characteristics about you. Now you want to be feminine. Right? When a sister puts on pants, that puts on masculine characteristics about her. Now she thinks she runs stuff. It's, that's backwards according to God. But guess what? You got time to repent. You got to make, give me that, um, in Sirach where you said make haste. I think it's five and seven. You got time to repent. So every time, every time you hear a law, you do a law. So now we out here teaching the so-called blacks and Hispanics, you the Israelites. We teaching you laws and commandments you probably never heard before. You love God, you show up by your actions. If you a sister in pants, you throw away your pants, you get you some dresses. You a brother, you put fringes on your garment. You, you grow a beard in your face. You stop eating pork. You stop buying on the Lord's Sabbath day to show forth your love for the Most High God. Right. Read what you got. So rock five and seven. The book of Sirach so chapter five verse seven. Make no tarrying to turn to the Lord. God said, make no tarrying to turn to him. So when you hear these words, you turn to the Lord swiftly. Read. Put not off from day to day. Don't put it off from day to day because with knowledge must come action. The old uh, phrase is what? If you knew better, you would do better, right? So when you get the knowledge, you got to put it into action. Right. Read. For suddenly shall the wrath of the Lord come forth, uh -huh. and in thy security uh -huh. thou shalt be destroyed. God said, if you wait off, put all day to day, day to day, procrastinate, he said, suddenly the wrath is going to come. And when you think everything is sweet, you sitting back in the, on the bed, eating your chips and donuts, watching TV, watching the basketball game, bam, here come the Lord destruction. So you got to understand, brother, we don't have time to play. We are in the last days, brother. Right. We are in the last days. World War III is on the brink. Right. right. And when World War III hits, Christ, the King of Kings, the Black Messiah is coming back. Right. And he's going to save the people that kept his laws, statutes, and commandments. If you ain't keep the commandments, I feel sorry for you. It's going to be a terrible day. Give me Isaiah 42. Sorry, 32. Let's see what it's going to look like when Christ return. Isaiah 42, 13. Isaiah chapter 42, verse 13. Let's let's learn about our Lord. Because guess what? This image has been taught to us. This white, hold that up for me, officer. This image, this white man image has been taught to us. This comes with softness. This comes with, oh, come as you are, be uh, speak as a little soft little lamb. It's not teaching right. you how to be a man. Right. It's teaching you how to stay a boy. You a grown boy. Right. We're under this image. Watch what the true king. Put that down. Put that down. Watch what the true king act like. Read what you got. The book of Isaiah, chapter 42, verse 13. The Lord shall go forth as a mighty man. Christ said when he come back, I'm coming forth as a mighty man. Read. He shall stir up jealousy uh -huh. like a man of war. Why he going to stir up jealousy? Because he only chose one people. That's Everybody right. else on the planet that want to say, Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus, he ain't dealing with them. You so-called blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans, you are the people that God chose. Right. Take pride in that thing and then live with it. Read. He shall cry. Yay, war. Come on. He shall prevail against his enemy. This white man ain't prevailing against nothing. This white man teaches homosexuality. It teaches the sisters to be in whoremonger. Teaches our brothers to be gangbangers and drug dealers. The black Messiah said, I'm going to come back like a man of war. Right. Right. Read. I have long time holding my peace. God said, I long time holding my peace. Christ is in the heavens waiting patiently. You want to know why? Because he's seeing the struggle of his people. Jeez. 
for you as a father, right? If you had children, right? And you saw your children getting beat up and all type of stuff, what would you do? Uh, I would have to take my children. You protect it. You'd be willing to put your life on the line for your children, right? How do you think the Lord feels in heaven knowing that his children is getting touched every day? We getting beat down by every system in place. We getting destroyed by education, by our food, by the drugs we sell in the community. We a long time holding my peace. I'm tired of seeing my children struggle. Read what you got. I have been still and refrained myself. He said I refrain myself because when I get when I let go, it's gonna be all bad. So I'm holding back until that time. Read. Now will I cry like? He said a now when I come, I will do what? Cry like a travailing woman. He said I'm gonna scream like a travailing woman, like a woman who's giving birth. I'm gonna scream like a travailing woman because I'm coming with fury and anger. Come on. I will destroy and devour. I will do what? Destroy and devour. You ain't never heard destroy and devour from this man. Right. The black messiah, Teach. the king of kings of Teach. the true Bible. He said, I'm coming back to destroy and devour. Read. At once. At once. It's going to be a quick swoop. Bang. Death and destruction. So guess what? You got a choice to make. Which side of the destruction do you want to be on? Right. Because the destruction is coming, right. whether you like it or not. That's right. You got the opportunity to be on the right side of destruction. To say, look, no. I'm an Israelite and I repented and kept God's commandments. So that what? I can be changed in the twinkling of an eye. Or you can stay in your wickedness and be on the wrong side of destruction and feel that fire when it comes. Bring it out. Give me the fire, Zechariah. Bring it out. Where it said, uh, the eyes shall melt. You know what I'm talking about? Zechariah 13? Is that what I'm 14, 12. Zechariah 14, 12. Give me the fire. Because God said, guess what? He said, I'm coming back to destroy. It ain't going to be no games being played when the Lord comes back. It ain't going to be no holding hands and cool by God. No. It's going to be, did you keep my commandments? Okay, you say, you go over the right. You didn't, judgment for you. Read what you got. The book of Zechariah, chapter 14, verse 12. Read. Now. And this shall be the plague wherewith the Lord will smite all the people that have fought against Jerusalem. Jerusalem is the motherland. Jerusalem is the kingdom of heaven. So it said you fought against Jerusalem. That goes into the other nations who try to keep you at the bottom of society. And that goes against our own brothers who try to hinder our growth in this truth. He said those who fought against Jerusalem, read. Their flesh shall consume away while they stand upon their feet. You ever seen something so hot it can melt you right while you standing? God said your flesh on your body is going to melt right off of you. Read. And their eyes shall consume away in their home. And your eyeballs gonna melt inside the sockets. Come on. And their tongue shall consume away in their mouth. They said their tongue shall melt in their mouth, but guess what? That is a great and terrible day that the Lord said is coming. But guess what? Give me Revelation 2.25. Let's see the flip side. God also said it's gonna be a great and glorious, beautiful promise for all of us who keep his commandments. Bring it out! Right? God said, listen, I, Christ said, in my father's house there are many mansions. Meaning what? It's going to be peace and tranquility in the kingdom. All you got to do is keep the laws. It's just that simple. Your, your, your victory is already written. Just do what God said. Read what you got. Revelation 2.25. The book of Revelation chapter 2 verse 25. You know. But that which he have already, uh -huh. hold fast till I come. So the things we have is these laws of God. We had a Bible. We had to hold on to it till Christ return. Read. And he that overcome it. He that overcome temptation. He that overcome his sins, his iniquities, read. And keepeth my works unto the end. Unto the end, keep the commandments for the long haul. Right? Come on. To him will I give power over the nations. God said we're going to get power over the nations. You seen the new Avengers that just came out? All the superhero? Guess where they got that from? They got that from this. Because we're going to be the superheroes on the planet. When God returns and puts the power in us, we're going to rule the planet the way the Avengers did. Read what you got. And he shall rule them with a rod of iron. As the vessels of a potter, they shall be broken to shiver, even as I received of my father, and I will give him the morning star. So Christ said, even as I received of my father, meaning the same power that the Lord God instilled in his son Christ, that Christ wanted to instill it in you. You don't want the power of Christ, right? You want the power, that's the greatest thing you could ever do, right? So guess what? If you want the power of Christ, you got to come back and repent, bro.
say that I'm a Jew would sound odd For years I've been walking around saying that I'm a black man I ain't saying that no more, it sounds wrong, man This is Bishop Nathaniel of Israel United in Christ Please subscribe to our YouTube channels Stay up to date with our latest events, music, and classroom lessons. IUIC plans to continue visiting different countries where this gospel has not been preached before. IUIC needs your help in pushing this truth. So join us. Subscribe to our Instagram. Facebook, Twitter, and podcasts, and stay up to date with us. For more information, please visit www.israelunite.org.